My name's uh, Rob, uh, Rob Ball, it's <coughs> the Ashton Meet. Uh, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, we're part of Freedom Northwest uh, hub site. Uh, what I've decided to do tonight is, uh, it's very obvious that we're getting these courts and uh, you're basically taking your life in your hands going into these courts. We can't guarantee law, we can't guarantee justice. I think we can all guarantee the whole thing. We're completely up to the corrupt to the point where we can't even begin to talk to these guys now. It's all it's a business. They make no, they make no, they make no uh, uh, secret. It's a business. You just have to read the financial reports. It's all a big business now. HMCTS, HMCTS is also anti-constitutional. So uh, uh, I've been looking for uh, ways to challenge these guys. We are not playing their rules. <coughs> not playing by their game and using their keys and using their board. We can change the rules in a whim, and they can bring as many players as they want in against us. You know. So uh, this week I'll be doing a presentation on slavery and human trafficking uh, and next week I'll do a presentation on legal uncertainty so next week we can, we can run over that one, it's interesting. So I'll just blast through this, excuse me if I go too fast, I'll put this on the file section of the Freedom Northwest website, that's www.freedom slash dash northwest dot com so it's www.freedom slash northwest dot com and it's in the file section feel free to download this this presentation so anyway uh, death is not the greatest loss in life the greatest loss in, is what dies inside us where we live I think that's superb that's absolutely true Declaration of Bro 1325 as a as a Scotsman, this means a lot to me, and we in Scotland are faced a long time ago what you guys in England are facing now, where a big powers come in and just say we're in charge now. Okay. Uh, so the Declaration of Abroad is a beautiful document. Uh, this was followed uh, Robert the Bruce uh, winning at Bannockburn, and they need to make presentations to the Vatican and to other countries to get recognised. Eventually, there was a recognition that resulted in what's called the Declaration of Abroad. Uh, is the, the last section. It is in truth not for glory, nor riches, nor honours that we are fighting, but for freedom, for that alone which no honest man gives up with, but with life itself. Uh, another section there is, uh, as long as but a hundred of us remain alive, never we, we on any conditions be brought under English rule. They replace English, English with European United Nation banker rule. Right, still stands, okay. So that's the Declaration of Abroad. Beautiful document. Introduction to uh, 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 slavery and human trafficking. Do you feel empowered or disempowered individually, as individuals, by the law and the financial system and the government? Do you understand that slavery covers a wide range of practices? Do you understand that there are international treaties and national laws prohibiting slavery? Do you know that we already have or had our own national slavery laws? So just put some pressures in the table. A lot of people don't know anti-slavery laws in this country. They don't know what slavery is. They don't know what human trafficking is, other than what the BBC tells us. So, <coughs> slavery. Uh, I'm going to give you a, an overview, a very brief overview. There's a bit more to it, but uh, this is the main elements I would suggest people really need to start looking into. It's in plain English. There's no Latin. Uh, it's, uh, it's designed in plain English. And it's designed for us to understand because at the end of the day, you don't know your rights, you don't have any. If you're a slave, nobody else is going to help you, you've got to help yourself, okay? And we help each other, more importantly. So, uh, I, mean, I won't go through the whole list, I'll, I'll, I'll be going through one at a time, uh, briefly, but uh, essentially, this is the this essential elements of it. Colonial registers, fascinating subject to look into slavery, pre abolition. It's a fascinating subject to look at from a commercial point of view. So if you look into slavery, it joins a lot of dots. It really joins a lot of dots, what happens in the commercial world today. And you see how things work and how they can depersonalise, dehumanise and make people into commodities and stock and trade and securities. And it's, it's really, really interesting. But uh, essentially in the UK, this is in the UK, uh, up to 1807, each British colony was required to maintain a register of slaves. A register of okay? Slavery and the slave trade were legal and lawful. Right. The Slave Trade Act 1807. There's a chap, William Wilberforce. If you all heard of William Wilberforce, oh, yeah. a few names, yeah. William Wilberforce. 
Uh, I'll, I'll briefly go over it. The Committee for the Abolition of Slave Trade, formed in 1787, was formed by a group of uh, English Protestants allied with the Quakers to unite their shared opposition to slavery and the slave trade. This was based upon uh, 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 the Christian fundamental beliefs that were all men under God, and therefore if you're a man you can't be a commodity. The Act abolished the slave trade in the British Empire, but interestingly, not slavery itself. So don't confuse the slave trade with slavery, and you understand this later on. Slavery on English soil was unsupported English law. It is still my understanding that there is no actual offence of slavery under common law. It's a purely statutory offence. This is where statutes actually did their job, because remember, statutes were created to fill the gap where common law was a bit grey or had, there was no, no decision, no test case. So bring a, the government would bring a statute in to fill that gap. And this is a classic case when a statute did fill in a gap in common law. So uh, they, they, they created the, the, the Slave Trade Act 1807. Interestingly, slavery remained illegal in most of the British Empire until the Slavery Abolition Act in 18, 1833. Very interesting years for statutes. Go into the uh, uh, legislation website and look up 18, 1833, 1834, and 1835. Some very interesting stuff happened around then. But anyway, so, uh, there you go. Right. 19th century efforts by Britain to force a global ban on slavery. I, for one, am absolutely jacked off to the eyeballs of people going, oh, you evil Brits, you slave this, you did that, you did the next thing, you know. I mean, out today I'm getting painted with, it's, it's been some sort of slave trader and bad guy. The facts are, the Royal Navy, which then controlled the World Seas, established East, East, the West Africa Squadron in 1808 to patrol the coast of West Africa, and between 1808 and 1860, they seized approximately 1,600 slave ships and freed 150,000 Africans on board. Us bad slave traders, us bad Brits. The Royal Navy declared that ships transporting slaves were the same as pirates. Action was also taken against African leaders who refused to agree to British treaties to outlaw the trade. For example, against the, the, the usurping King of Lagos, who was deposed in 1851, Anti-slavery treaties were signed by over 50 African rulers. That was as a push that. Okay, so we, and what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to make here is that Britain, uh, we drove the world to abolish slavery. We were the driving force behind it. We were mighty and powerful in that respect as well. Uh, the, the Americans bowed under our pressure and they abolished it. it was under our pressure. Uh, so anyway, there's, there's a few other bits and pieces here. Uh, in 1890, Britain handed control of the strategically important island of Heligoland in the North Sea, Second World War, uh, uh, devotees will understand what that is, to Germany in return for control of Zanzibar, in part to help enforce the ban on slave trading. That's good guys, that's fine. Anyway, so, just, just right here, we, 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 we carry that burden on our shoulders, we stand on the shoulders of giants here. Some great men in the past did abandon slavery, did recognise it as men, as human beings out there, and they were not just all legal commodities. Uh, so we've got to carry that forward. The Slavery Abolition Act 1833. The Slavery Abolition Act 1833 was an act of the Parliament of the UK abolishing slavery throughout the British Empire. Interestingly, with the exception of the territories in possession of these, the East India Company. Right, so those of you who know a bit of East India Company, yeah, it won't come as a surprise. Uh, the island of Ceylon and the island of St Helena. Uh, but they, they were uh, uh, eliminated in 1843. The act was repealed in 1998 uh, by Mr Blair and his wife as part of a wider rationalisation of English statute law, but later anti-slavery legislation remains in force, which we'll find out. The Slavery Convention, International Labour Organisation, uh, we sat down with the League of Nations and said, look, we've got to ban this slavery. It's not a good idea. It's, it's a bad thing. We can't trade these countries that are, are slaving people. Uh, so they uh, had the Slavery Convention in 1926. Excuse me, 1926. Now, I'll just, I'll just blast through some of the articles. I'll put them on here. I'm not intending to do them in detail. But Article 1, for the purposes of the present convention, the following definitions are agreed upon. I like definitions. Slavery is the status or condition of a person over whom, that's where it gets interesting, any or all of the powers attached to the right of ownership are exercised. So for you to be a slave, you don't need to be entirely owned, just part of you. Small part, any part, says any. Any part, one percent, half a percent, just have to be owned by someone. How many in this room put their hands up here genuinely think they're not owned by someone? Uh, 
about 20% of their genes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah one fifth. Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll ask yeah. another couple of them. Yeah, absolutely. Pete's yeah, got a genes that don't to us. Absolutely, absolutely. That's going to be challenging. Uh, but the, the big, big, big point is here, remember that statement there, it's, it's the status condition of a person over, who, over whom any or all of the powers attached to the right of ownership are exercised. Any of the powers. So you don't have to be entirely a slave. The slave trade, section 2, part 2, includes all acts, and then again this week is very interesting, the words, all acts involved in the capture, acquisition, or disposal of a person with intent to reduce him to slavery. Run over it again. Slave trade includes all acts involved in the capture, acquisition, or disposal of a person with intent to reduce them to slavery. How many people have been to court, magistrates court, county court? How many people were right? Would you say you were captured? Acquired? Yeah, you disposed of? Are you the legal person? I'm the man. No, are you the legal person? I'm the man. Are you the legal person? I'm like, we're not, we're not, you've seen it today, non appearance. I've got you. Okay, we can only hear the legal person here. Really? I thought it was entitled to use and obligated. Anyway, so capture, acquisition, or disposal. Council tax. You as council tax. Why? Because just bloody do. Well, I've got loads of questions here. Please answer these questions. Silence. Not answering your questions. Just pay the money and it'll go away. <coughs> capture, acquisition, or disposal. All acts involved in acquisition of a slave with a view to selling or exchanging him. Wow. So if they get our debt, and to make a debt slave slave from us and sell that to someone else. Surely that's and the intention is to sell the slavery to someone else for debt. Uh, all all acts of disposal by sale or exchange of a slave acquired with a view to being sold or exchanged, and in general every act of trade or transport in slaves. So every act is just blasting, it's not just like specific, really specific as you find later on. This is very general. Every act of trade or transport in slaves. That was ratified by the members of League of Nations, including the UK, back in 1926. Can you just move your mic here, please, uh, uh, Stuart, please? The Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, a lot of people are quoting that. You've got to understand what it is. It is not a legally binding treaty. It is a promise. It's a pledge. It's a treaty of pledge, OK? So if you went to a court, quote, the Universal Declaration, they can ignore it because it's not legally binding on them. However, the two United Nations covenants and the, the, declaration, uh, sorry, the conventions that follow are legally binding. But be careful with that one, that's not legally binding. But it is, however, the document of definition and intent. So everything that follows on, you go back, if, you, if there's any question about the, 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 the definition and intent, go back to that. That's where it all arises from, okay? So Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1948, United Nations document. Uh, after the war, like countries have been bombed flat, there are Legal systems were null, or the no, there was no government at all. Look at Germany, for example, absolutely nothing there. So, this document was not and was never intended to be an exhaustive list of individual and social freedoms and rights. So, it's not intended to be exhaustive, it's just this is the minimum. Following the Second World War, it was intended as a framework for countries who were rebuilding a government and legal system from scratch. We in the UK had our customs, traditions, national laws and British constitution. We didn't need universal declaration of human rights. We already had those covered with our constitution. Okay? Same with America. Right? It's very interesting looking at the, how this universal declaration was, uh, I think it was four different uh, drafts of it. And the original draft was beautiful, it was all individual rights. Then the commies came in and whittled away at and compromised, compromised until we got the one we've got here. So it's quite, it's quite interesting to see that the, the commies eventually were overthrown by their own people. Okay, so if we've got, if we've got, the, dec if we've got the declaration where the commies hadn't been messing around with it, it'd be really good. Anyway, Article 1, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. End of. No discussion on the subject there. Uh, Article 4, no one shall be held in slavery or servitude. You'll see this coming up and again and again. They keep using these same words, okay? Uh, so this will prove that this all comes from this document. No one should be held in slavery or servitude. Slavery and the slave trade, so you've defined the two as separate, shall be prohibited in all their forms. Everyone has a right to recognition, recognition everywhere as a person before the law. You've got a right to recognition, not an obligation. Okay, so the judge is saying, you are that legal person. Sorry, sir, I've got a right to recognition, not an obligation. 
uh, all are equal before the law and are entitled without any discrimination to equal protection of the law. All are entitled to equal protection against any discrimination and violation of this declaration and against any incitement to such discrimination. Article 30. This says nothing in this declaration may be interpreted as implying for any state, group or person any right to engage in any activity or to perform any act aimed at the destruction of any of the rights and freedoms set forth herein. That's fairly, that's fairly comprehensive. The government can't go in and interpret that. <coughs> okay. So who's it designed to interpret it by? No one. God. Oh, it's people. people. That's why it's in plain English. Okay, there's a bit of legal ease in there, but it's, it's designed to be very, very easy to understand. And what's the government done since then? Took away all the Interpreted language. the bugger, right? Anyway. As we'll find out. <coughs> Council of Europe, European Convention, Human Rights. This is the Council of Europe, right? European Convention, Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms. Notice that second part there, there's suddenly fundamental freedoms. Well, I like that. It's universal, universal Declaration of Human Rights, which recognises we have freedoms. This document codifies it, so we do have fundamental freedoms. Really? We already have those in the English Constitution. British, yeah, the British Constitution. We already have fundamental freedoms enshrined in our Constitution. But it's nice these guys have decided to ever go it. To, to, to declare them for us. Uh, I won't go into too much depth on that one, but uh, it says Article 4, no one shall be held in slavery or servitude, full stop. What's the most important part of that sentence? Full stop. No one. The full stop. The full stop. No exceptions. No except or unless. Full stop. The wording remains unchanged in the 2010 revised convention, and I believe now they're referring to it as the European Convention of Human Rights, and have dropped the fundamental freedoms part of it. Okay. Rights are derived from freedoms. Freedoms is what we have. They cannot <coughs> take it away from us. The government can't define our rights, which is why there's no uh, Fundamental Freedoms Act. The government cannot, as you see, Article 30 of Universal Declaration <coughs> says that the government cannot define our rights for us, cannot interpret. We have those. <coughs> what they can do is mess it around with the, the human rights bit because the rights is the mechanism by which our freedoms are protected. So I don't care what the rights are. That's, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Protect my freedoms. Okay. So, next one. The 18 Nations, 1956 Supplementary Convention, the abolition of slavery, the slave trade, and institutions and practices similar to slavery. These are all on the Freedom Northwest website in the file section. I've dumped them on there, right? This is the mother document. This is the big one you can go from, okay? Because uh, it gives us these lovely word definitions, okay? So each of the state parties, this convention, blah, 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 right? Uh, whether or not they are covered by the definition, the definition of slavery contained in Article 1 of the Slavery Convention, that's the 1926 Slavery Convention. <coughs> so what they're doing is they've taken that 1926 International Labour <coughs> Organization Convention, they decided to sort of fix it. There's a few problems with it. Fix it, tidy it up, make it, you know, make it a better document. And it came under the Council of Europe rather than International Labour Organization. And but remember the League of Nations as well was out was gone, the United Nations, so we had better to revamp this. So this is what they did. Uh, Again, 1956, just after the war, a lot of people still remember the horrors and the, the, the death and the bloodshed and the, the sheer insanity of what happened. And this was guys generally trying to fix the world. Please don't think this was anything other than that. They'll try to fix the world. It was the year before the Treaty of Rome, wasn't it? It was the year before the Treaty of Rome. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, that's another big discussion, that one. <coughs> so, we give the definitions here. A, debt bondage. Debt bondage? Slavery? That is to say, the status or condition arising from the pledge by a debtor of his personal services or those of a person under his control as a security for a debt. All right, okay, so there's a lot of these, these outfits out there get us as a security for a debt, then they're selling that security, aren't they? That would appear to me to be a contravention of this. Mortgages are a good example of that, perhaps. Okay. If the, values of, if the value of those services is reasonably assessed, is not applied towards liquidation of the debt, or the length and nature of those services are not respectively limited and defined. So what it's saying is if you're working for someone, you're paying off a debt. It's got to be contracts, it's got to be fair, it's got to be equal consideration, it's got to be, you know, fair as a word for it. You can't just say, you know, you're going to work for the rest of your life and I'm going to take two thousand percent a day. The loan shark deals, right? This is what that's trying to kill. Serfdom B, that is to say, the condition or status of a tenant who is by law, custom or agreement bound to live in labour and land belonging to another person and to render some determinate service to such other person, whether for reward or not, and is not free to change his status. Who owns a land? You, who, all you guys own, own your own places. Who owns a house? Who owns a land? Yeah. 
you've registered it. So you've, 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 you've split the ownership title over, right? So uh, that's that's a very interesting one to pursue again, because you could claim you're actually a serf. You know why the council saying, you live, in, you live in Wigan District, Wigan Borough, so therefore you owe us money. Well, hold on, is that not serfdom? Can we come some sort of discussion here on this one? Nope, just give us your money. I'll claim that as serfdom. Anyways, Article 4. This is interesting, and I'm still mulling this over my head, this one, right? We could have some fun with this one. Any slave, we can prove for slaves, who takes refuge on board any vessel of a state party of this convention shall ipso facto be free. Wow. <laughs> Full stop. Wow, no exceptions, no buts, no perhapses. Full stop. Have a good, have some fun with that one, guys. Have a think about that one. Article 5. In a country with the abolition or abandonment of slavery or of institutions or practices mentioned in Article 1 of this convention, which is up there, uh, is not yet complete. The act of mutilating and affiliating this branding or otherwise marking a slave or a person of servile status in order to indicate his status, right? Uh, I would look at credit reference agencies. That, that's what they're doing, the branding, isn't they? Marking uh, liability on Liability. Well, RFID chips. Well, see, there's what they've got to pay for the money. We'll never get away with it. Pay on the passport. Pay in the passport, or we're told that it's personal. But uh, think of a thousand ways. If they give you a reference number in your documentation, which is a special reference number because you're in debt to them, allegedly, <coughs> is that not branding you? Marking you for special treatment? So have some thought about that one. Uh, so it indicates your status. Right? Uh, or as a punishment or for any other reason, or being excessive there too, shall be a criminal offence. Criminal, wow! Under the laws of state parties. So, wow, this, this, this slavery and uh, 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 trafficking is criminal. It's not, it's not civil. That was a game for us, didn't it? That's not criminal. It's criminal. Uh, under the laws of the state parties, this convention, this where it gets interesting again, and persons convicted thereof shall be liable to punishment. Okay? Right. Article 6, there are two articles, see, I've, I've chopped out the articles that are relevant, not going through them all. <coughs> Article 6, the act of enslaving another person or of inducing another person to give himself or a person dependent upon him into slavery or even attempting these acts or being excessively thereto or being a party to a conspiracy to accomplish any such acts shall be a criminal offence. Under the laws of the state parties, this convention, and persons convicted thereof shall be liable to punishment. Oh, where did I start with that one? I lot of people, like people nodding in the room or something. <laughs> right? So, uh, there you go. Uh, inducing another person to give himself uh, into slavery. Ooh. Anyway, subject to provisions of the introductory paragraph of a, the provisions of paragraph one of the present article shall also apply to the act of inducing another person to place himself or a person dependent upon them into servile status. So they've, they've changed from slavery now to servile status. We'll find out that is shortly. Resulting from any of the institutions or practices mentioned in Article 1. So that covers slavery and servile status. Okay? Article 7. This is definitions again. I like them. For the purposes of the present convention, slavery means, as defined in the Slavery Convention of 1926, so they're confirming this is the, still the, the definition of slavery, uh, the status or condition of a person over whom any or all the powers attached to the right of ownership are, are, are exercised. So it still says any or all. So you don't have to be completely owned. You can just be no part of it, you're a slave. Uh, and slave means a person in such condition or status. Wow. Uh, a person of servile status. So that's a servant. Means a person in a condition or status resulting from any of the institutions or practices mentioned in Article 1 of this convention. I've put in your debt servitude, because Article 1 covers debt servitude. So you're a servant to that debt, aren't you? You're a servant to whoever claims to own that, 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 that debt. Slave trade means and includes all acts involved. What well, these words again? Capture, acquire, disposal of a person with intent to reduce them to slavery. So it's just the intent, you don't even have to do it, just intent to reduce them to slavery. So capture, acquire, or disposal of that person. Okay, uh, this is a very interesting part by the All acts involved in the acquisition of a slave with a view to selling and exchanging him. All acts of disposal by sale and exchange of a person required, acquired, with a view to being sold and exchanged. So uh, you have to think about that one. And in general, every act of trade or transport and slaves by whatever means of conveyance. Wow. <coughs> so what I've done is I've not just been specific, I've given it an absolute broad brush. Anything we decide, we can challenge us. So in general, every act of trade or transport and slaves 
by whatever means of conveyance. Do you know what the word conveyance means? Any anyway, whatever stab at it? Show me. Give me an example of conveyances. Take it from one place to another. No? That's one way. Yeah. House is a conveyance. You can yeah. your house when you find it. Stock. Stock. Convey your stock. Yeah. Bills of exchange. You can convey money. You can have contracts. You can convey. I mean, there's, there's all bits of paper. Or commercial. <coughs> some form of conveyance. Okay. Can I just, just say that? Children can convey their children. Yeah. Children can convey their children. Children can convey their children. Children can Dad, yeah, there are different, that's, yeah, there's this specific protections yeah. for them on the United Nations. I'll briefly, very briefly, we go into that. I was thing. thinking, you know, this, yeah, it's that specific, specific, that one. They have special protections, more so than the rest of us have, by the way. Okay. What happens is the government takes that stuff, mix it up, they go, don't on that, don't on that, don't on that, you'll keep that, but that gives us power. Oh, don't on that, don't on that, it gives them power. Oh, take that, but it gives us power. So what they do is they leave us, right? a uh, skinny version of what it was actually originally started out as the United Nations and Europe actually created our constitution created and what they get is basic a document gives them all the power and all the stuff that we have power has been discarded to one side so you need to be going back to the original documents like I'm doing here right United Nations Convention the rights of the child right this is a good document for you to be looking at but for the purposes of this doc uh, bearing in mind as an indication and declaration of rights of the child Quote, the child by reason of his physical and mental immaturity needs special safeguards and care, including appropriate legal protection before as well as after birth. So states recognise it as a right to do that. I'm not going to too much depth that the, ch the child shall be registered immediately after birth and shall have the right from birth to a name and the right to acquire a nationality. So these guys are heavily into the birth rate, the birth, uh, or I'm going to go on camera, you just afterwards, if you don't mind. Yeah, just so, uh, uh, so it's saying that the, the United Nations actually saying the children have to be registered. Well, the reason I put that in there, if you're registering somewhere, is that not a way of handing the ownership uh, over? Yeah, not so they're not obliging the parents, would they like it or not, to go in there and the state will come and register your child. Right. Uh, so to me that thinks, well, you surely should have a choice to register my child or not, because you're splitting ownership of the child. Mm. Uh, anyway, I'm going into this. Uh, Our Human Rights Act 1998. Oh, I hate this document. Mm. <coughs> what they've done is they've taken all the good stuff and went, don't want that, leave the crap in on you. We'll give you this right and then accept, 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 accept. You've actually got less rights than you started with, right? It's an appalling document. Thank uh, Madame Blair for this. This is an appalling document. Uh, I tend to just use it for leaving my back side, to be honest, but this is the one that was pretty good, right? Prohibition of slavery and forced labour. They use words again you've seen before. No one should be heard in slavery or servitude. Okay, it's so Article 4, Part 1, no one should be held in slavery or servitude. We've read that before. Again, what's the most important part of that sentence? Oh, no. Now, if you read the rest of it, it's accept, accept, forced labour. Yeah, forced labour's banned. Except, boom, 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 right? This is no, it's just full stop. So the onus is on us now to prove no one means a man and woman. Right, you don't understand that yet. No one is legal terms for man and woman. So you've got to prove held, this word's there. Held, shall is obligatory, so it means that you cannot do it, right? Held is a word you need to define, slavery or servitude. So there's only three words in that you've got to define. So if you're arguing the slavery or servitude, you've only three words to define in that sentence. And you've got a case. Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union 2000. So the European Union, nice guys that they were, have totally screwed up the concept of human rights and fundamental freedoms, and they've mixed them up and created this new sort of bastard child of it, called the fundamental rights. If you actually look at the, 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 the police oath, the police swear an oath to uphold their fundamental rights. I have no idea what a fundamental right is. I know what a fundamental freedom is. I know what a right is. I know what a fundamental right is. This is them wordsmithing and being clever, right? So this is 2000. You know, this is just after 1998, all the human rights acts and all these different declarations were introduced. Article 1, there's a few bits and pieces we can steal out of this, 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 whatever it is. Human and human dignity is inviolable. It must be respected and protected. Okay. Article 5. Prohibition of slavery and forced labour. No one shall be held in slavery or servitude. So we'll stop. Oh, do it again, it's all just that same sentence. No one shall be required to, to form forced or compulsive labour. Right, okay, but unfortunately, if you look at the Human Rights Act, it says no one should be required to perform forced or compulsive labour, except, boom, 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 boom. So there's a disconnect there. And... Trafficking in human beings is prohibited, full stop. 
So that's the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union 2000. So according to our European friends across the water, that's the rights they've decided we can have, nice guys that they are. You know, uh, I would suggest that our, our constitution goes a lot deeper than that. Okay? So that's, I would say that's your minimum rights. Right, I won't go through any depth. This is what they've said our rights are, right? Right to liberty, security, private family life, protection of personal data. <laughs> this is hilarious, you read it. Uh, right to marry, right to found a family, freedom of thought, freedom of expression and information. You try to get an expression of freedoms here long you last. Right, so anyway. Uh, right to property, yeah, kill out in the bills, so take my car off you. Okay, so, Coroners and Justice Act. Now, the Coroners and Justice Act, we'll, I'll explain after this slide why it's such an important one, right? Uh, Section 71 covers slavery, servitude, and forced or compulsory labour. This is the United Kingdom Act. Uh, a person commits an offence if he holds another person in slavery or servitude, and the circumstances are such that he knows or ought to know that the person is so ill. Get forward. He requires another person to perform forced or compulsory labour, and the circumstances are such that he knows or ought to know that the person has been required to perform such labour. Question. Question. What does the D mean? It's just, it's just a name. It's just, it's just a key. It's not like another defendant or a plaintiff or not. No, it's not. Mm. Okay, sorry. In subsection 1, so that's the person who puts an offence uh, uh, the reference to holding a person in slavery or servitude or requiring a person to perform forced or compulsory labour are to be construed in accordance with Article 4 of the Human Rights Convention, which prohibits a person to be held in slavery or servitude, full stop. Okay? Uh, a person guilty of an offence under this section is liable to so this is, uh, they, if they can be a summary conviction or they can be an indictment uh, and they can be up to 14 years and a hefty fine on top of that, okay. Uh, anyway, so and it's uh, Human Rights Convention means the Convention of Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, that's on uh, the thing, but anyway, so you can see it's criminal and you take it seriously if you can prove it. Now if you're going to argue in a fancy civil case, there's a lot to prove, there's a lot of paperwork, how much do you have to prove with this one? Pretty easy, isn't it? Why? Here's a big one. If we had protection against slavery since William Wilberforce's time and the 19th century anti-slavery acts, did we need slavery to be made illegal in 2009? Slavery by consent is not against the law. You're slavery now by consent. We're not going to slavery by consent. By consent, yeah. But why is it illegal in 2009? Does that not lead you to believe that slavery actually wasn't illegal? There was loopholes that were getting exploited and the government caught this in 2008. Okay. Anyone else any ideas about that one? Have a look at it. Semantics, isn't it? I mean, people refer to them as wage slaves. Yeah. Debt slaves. So there's, there's yeah, debt slaves as well. I would look at that. Okay. And you notice he had it amongst this section 71 of the, the Coroners and Justice Act. Remember 1998 they repealed the Anti Slavery Act? You know, again, uh, Mrs. Blair and Mr. Blair approved the Anti-Slavery Act. So from 1998 to 2008, what was covering us against slavery? And what happened between 1998 and 2009, didn't it? So, Anti-Slavery Act 2010, right. Just to just let you know, uh, it was in 2010 they brought out in the UK the Anti-Slavery Act. And the reason I'm doing this this week is because next Thursday, the 18th, is Anti-Slavery Day. <coughs> Okay. So I'm going to be celebrating that by sending off some of these letters. You're not okay. the only one, Rob. So please, please, if you, if you want to celebrate Anti-Slavery Day, let's put them on your about us. Okay? Uh, Anti-Slavery Day, blah, 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 blah. The purpose of Anti-Slavery Day shall be to acknowledge that millions of men, women and children continue to be victims of slavery, depriving them of basic human dignity and freedom. Okay? Uh, raise awareness amongst young people and others, we are Jewish to others, young people are all young people, and then the rest of them, uh, of the dangers and consequences of slavery, human trafficking, exploitation, and encourage them to be proactive in the fight against it. And that's what I'm doing today, guys. Right. Uh, I'm raising your awareness. Draw attention to the progress made by government and those working to combat all forms of slavery, human trafficking, and exploitation, and what more needs to be done? Well, I can think of a lot of things. Yeah. I can think of a lot of things. Now, this thing is interesting. Remember saying the government takes a good idea, chops away at it, it's absolutely bugger all left, right? In this act, and it's called the Anti-Slavery Act, in this act, slavery includes 
trafficking for sexual exploitation, child trafficking, trafficking for forced labour and domestic servitude. The key word in that sentence is what? No, includes. It's not exclusive. Okay. What they're trying to do is they try and take people's attention away. They show us they sort of bunch of eight, eight and nine year old school kids in school and you're know, thinking that's it, but it's not. You know, I don't it includes. So that does not exclude other forms of slavery. So if you're a debt slave, I know somebody's a debt slave, let the voice be heard the 18th of November, screaming from the rooftop, start writing letters, I'm a fucking slave, I'm not happy. Anyway, uh, human trafficking. Now, we've, we've dealt with slavery, very briefly, it's a big subject, but we've dealt with slavery. Human trafficking is a form of slavery and the slave trade. What is human trafficking? The 2005 Council of Europe Convention on Action Against Trafficking in Human Beings. The reason I brought this in, because this actually gives us definitions, right? So it's 2005, so it's halfway through the Blair regime. Uh, Preamble, considering that trafficking in human beings constitutes a violation of human rights and an offence to the dignity and the integrity of a human being. Well, not the legal person, that's a human being. So can you, be, can you be enslaved as a legal person? Or as a human being? As a man, a woman? Oh. You know the difference? Can you be enslaved as a legal person? Yeah. Can you be enslaved using the legal person? Legal person can't be enslaved, but the man or woman can be enslaved using the legal person. Quite aware of that one. Yeah, but the legal person is a mechanism, it's a front, it's a, as the Secretary of State wrote to me, it's a reflection. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's a mechanism by which they use to enslave us, if you want to look at it that way. You can use it, uh, it can be used for other things as well, but. Uh, it's not related to employment law. It's not related to employment law. This goes above employment law, this is way above employment law. Well, it's a bullet, but I mean, human trafficking, a lot of it's in prostitution, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that's the BBC, let's just know, that's fine, I've got a friend, a Canadian lady, who worked for, uh, she saw the inside of how the government really think of human trafficking and slave trade, they don't give a shit, it's embarrassing for them, I'll get people who worked in the industry, I mean, actually worked, try to save these girls, and they go to the government's and they're kicking doors down, and you get these bloody paedophile, Criminals running the governments don't care. They'll stand in front of stage and applaud the platitudes. The reality is, behind the scenes, they don't care. They want these girls to disappear because they're embarrassing. It's an embarrassment to the country. Right, so basically, these guys won't admit it exists. Yeah, that's just one example. But I mean, trafficking, as you're about to find out, goes a lot deeper than that, right? So. Uh, Considering that trafficking in human beings may result in slavery for victims, considering respect for victims' rights, protecting our victims, and actually to combat trafficking in human beings must be the paramount objectives. Paramount objectives. That's above everything else. Paramount. This can seem like a court and say that's a paramount objective. Has this been trafficked here today? Forget the rest of the crap. That's, 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 this is the big one. Am I been trafficked here today? Has he been trafficked? Has she been trafficked? Uh, Article 2, the scope of it is the convention, again I've, I've chopped bits out of this, the, this convention shall apply to all, form, all forms of human traffic, sorry, this convention shall apply to all forms of traffic in human beings, whether national or transnational, whether or not connected with organised crime, full stop, that's all forms of trafficking, okay, so it's not just restricted to sex, the sex trade or uh, stealing babies or whatever, you know, it's all forms of trafficking. Non-discrimination principle, Article 3. The implementation of the provisions of this convention by parties, in particular the enjoyment of measures to protect and promote the rights of victims, shall be secured without discrimination on any grounds. This way gets interesting, such as sex, race, colour, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, association with a national minority, property, birth or other status. That pretty much covers everything. Okay, so then they have to recognise that. Uh, this is again definitions. Article 4. <coughs> it's the Council of Europe Convention on Action Against Trafficking in Human Beings. Article 4 definitions, my favourite word. For the purposes of the convention, A. Trafficking in human beings shall mean the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harbouring, or receipt of persons by means of the threat or use of force or other forms of co coercion, of abduction, of fraud, of deception, of the abuse of power, or of a position of vulnerability, or of the giving or receiving of payments or benefits 
to achieve the consent of a person having control over another person for the purpose of exploitation. My good God, how good is that? That's <laughs> one example. What's the example there? Look at that. So there's the methods we can use is a means of threat, force, coercion, abduction, fraud, deception, abuse of power, uh, gaining a position of vulnerability, uh, giving and receiving payments or benefits to achieve your consent. Okay. Now, so you've got to extend. So exploitation should include, should include at a minimum, I mean, this is a minimum, uh, the exploitation of prostitution, sexual, forced labour services, slavery, or practices similar to slavery. Servitude is a practice similar to slavery, by the way, in fact. Uh, servitude or the removal of organs. Right. Well, they're not removing organs, but... Uh, B, this, we guess this is... We all use these guys who study contract law, right? Uh, the consent of a victim of trafficking in human beings to the intended exploitation that set forth, and that, that paragraph I just read out, shall be irrelevant to any of the means set forth in that paragraph I've been used. So if, if you've signed a contract, you've consented to do something due to threat, force, coercion, abduction, fraud, deception, abuse of power, they've made you vulnerable, or they've given and receiving of payments or benefits, blah, 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 right, shall be irrelevant. No consent has been given. Contract law. Consent has to be voluntary. And you've got to full consideration, you've got to full faculty to do it. So, uh, doesn't matter if you give it, you consented. I don't care. Ah, that section B says, that's irrelevant. You achieved that consent by foul means, not fair. That's a big one, guys. Please use that. Contract law, undue influence. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's all in all forms of undue influence. Yeah, absolutely. Undue influence. Absolutely. Deceit, fraud. There's a whole raft of things. So, C is recruitment, transportation, harbouring, transfer, harbouring, receipt of a child for the purposes of a bunch of next to couple's children. Victim. Victim shall mean any natural person. Oh, natural person. Victims should mean any natural person who is subject to trafficking in human beings as defined in this article. So to be a victim of trafficking, you have to be a natural person. Mm -hmm. right? This is why they want us to use legal person. Mm -hmm. You know, starting to join dots here, yeah? yeah. That's yeah. why they want us to be a legal person. This becomes irrelevant. So if you go into court with your armor bit of paper, that's irrelevant. You go in as a man, this is why they don't like it. Because you've got these protections. So do not back down. As I say, next week I'll give you some more information which will uh, give you some more ideas. I won't blast this, right? 1990 Universal Declaration. What happened in 1998? I've been told by sources as that there was, there was factions within the United Nations. It was being infiltrated for political purposes and by corporations, corporate lobbyists, right? And it was dying, right? They knew it was being taken over and it was all the globalisation and this one world and, you know, uh, 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 oh crap, you know, let's, let's do this, it's corporate, it's a corporate takeover. That's what's happening, it's a corporate takeover. So I've some very good people in the United Nations, and feel free to read up on this, it's a really interesting subject, uh, this, what happened this time. Uh, declared the 1998 UN Declaration on the right and responsibility of individuals, groups and organs of society to promote and protect universally recognised human rights and fundamental freedoms. Blah, 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 blah. We call it the 1998 Universal Declaration. So it says that the... Saying all, anything to do with the government, right, is going to protect us, promote and protect us. So if you're there promoting uh, a universal rights, protecting universal rights and fundamental freedoms, the government's got an obligation to recognise them, actually protect you, as you'll find out to assist us as well. Which is why I keep telling people, put yourself forward as an advocate of human rights and fundamental freedoms. That's your shield. If you do that, they can't brand you. If you don't show yourself that, they can brand you with a name that triggers certain other words that we don't want to be talking about here. Uh, so I won't, I won't go through this in any great depth, right, but this basically gives us, basically sets out for us that we, the government's got to kiss our backside. If we go in for this, right, the government's got to kiss our backside for this. They signed up to it, they have to do it, right? If we recognise a natural person and power the natural person and don't just become a legal person all day. Okay. Uh, this does give you the right to a fair trial. Oh, this is an interesting one. To complain about the policies and actions of individual offices and government bodies with regard to violations of human rights and fundamental freedoms by petition or other appropriate means. To 
competent domestic judicial administrative or legislative, or legislative authorities or any other competent authority provided for by the legal system of the state. We should render their decision in the complaint without undue delay. If you can complain, if you feel you are being enslaved on the 18th of November, feel free to put some complaints there. Okay, so you read that in your own time, it's on the, 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 the Freedom of Northwest website. Uh, again, in 1898 UN Declaration, no one shall participate by act of failure, or this is Article 10, or to act where required in violating human rights and fundamental freedoms, and no one shall be subjected to punishment or adverse action of any kind for refusing to do so. Hold on. So no one shall participate by act of failure or required in violating human rights, and no one's allowed to affect our human rights or freedoms, and no one should be subject to punishment or adverse action of any kind for refusing to do so. So if you go to court and say, I'm standing up for somebody's human rights, and the judge punishes you for that, is that serious? Uh, Article 11, everyone has a right individually and in association with others to the lawful exercise of his or her occupation or profession. Okay, now with the idea is that you decide you don't want to do a job, not a slave. Everyone who is a result of his or her profession can affect the human dignity, human rights and fundamental freedoms of others should respect those rights and freedoms and comply with relevant national and international standards of occupational and professional conduct of ethics. Well, judges spend the mind there. Mm. Council officials, government agencies. Okay. Hold them to that. Article 12 says that basically we can all get together as advocates of human rights and meet as much as we want, when we want. We can be inventive with our ways we're dealing with human rights, ways we're protecting them, it allows us to be inventive. Uh, the state shall take all necessary measures to ensure the protection by the competent authorities of everyone, <coughs> individually, in association with others, against any violence, threats, retaliation, de facto or de jure adverse discrimination. Oh, that's interesting. I always understand that, what those mean. Uh, pressure or any other arbitrary action as a consequence of his or her legitimate exercise of the rights referred to in the present declaration. In this connection, everyone is entitled individually and in association with others to be protected effectively under national law and reacting against or opposing through peaceful means, activities and acts, including those by omission attributable to states that result in the violation of human rights and fundamental freedoms, as well as acts of violence perpetrated by groups or individuals that affect the enjoyment of human rights and fundamental freedoms. Basically, the states can use good to kiss our backside. If you're doing this, they've got to do it. They've signed up to it, guys. If you're not being lawful, you're, that's, that's that you're on a different game, game here, but if you're being lawful and uh, you're complying with the laws, you've been, you've been, you've been a good soul, uh, uh, you've got them. Uh, more stuff there, right? Again, nothing in Article 20, nothing in present declaration shall be interpreted as permitting states to support and promote activities of individuals, groups of individuals, institutions, or non government organisations contrary to the provisions of the Charter of the 18 Nations. So basically, it's, it's, it's this Article 30 of Universal Declaration that the state can't interpret it. They've got to actually help us. It's there. Okay. Uh, Ellen Runeberus, who was the chair of the committee that sat in Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and has got a lot of wonderful things to say about the, the Soviet uh, 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 entourage over there. Interesting. There's a book written about it, and it's very interesting reading. It's quite entertaining. Freedom makes a huge requirement of every human being. With freedom comes responsibility. For the person who is unwilling to grow up, the person who does not want to carry his own weight, this is a frightening prospect. How true is that? So for those of us who do want freedom, there is responsibility that comes with that. You've got to aware of it. There's no point in seeing them free now and then going to the state for benefits. If you go for freedom, you go for freedom. Okay. It does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen in setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. I think we're all doing that here. Yeah. William Wilberforce, you've heard that name, he brought in the Anti-Slavery Act. Uh, if to be feeling me alive to the sufferings of my fellow creatures is to be a fanatic, I am one of the most incurable fanatics ever permitted to be at large. Brilliant words. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any quick questions? I think they're all on the file section. All those treaties, that slideshow, everyone's on the, the Freedom Northwest website file section. So help yourself and uh, have fun with that. And I'd like for us to be working in teams with us and some real fun. So any cases, let's go for anti-slavery and uh, human trafficking. Any good questions answers?
my moment, one point I was making is that people were uh, <coughs> looking to the real origins of slavery and the slave babies. Yes. So we're looking to someone called Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam. Oh, very familiar with him and Elijah Muhammad, yeah. Uh, the, 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 the press hate him, the media hate him. So just looking to what he's got to say. I didn't want to bring religion into it, but yes. Yeah. And there's also looking to Rome as well. Rome, the definition of free man in Rome is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. Another fact was the opportunity. Um, children um, should be afforded appropriate legal protection before and after birth. Yeah. So where does that leave abortion? Mm -hmm. The way they defined it the before as, yeah. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> protection before <laughs> surely abortion is. Yeah. 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 See, 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 they, they play with things. Can you, uh, last point, community service for uh, anything financial, is that not coercive yeah. slavery? Yeah. It says in the European Convention and the Human Rights Act that forced labour uh, is to be prohibited, top of my head here, except blah 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 Prisoners blah in the obligation. course of normal civic uh, obligations, obligations, I think is what you use, normal civic obligations. So, so, so if, you, if you know with that, if you know with that like community service or prison time then you, you have to do it. Yeah. No, well, you, yeah. you hold on, right? Well, what's the normal civic obligation? Yeah, Does anyone give you a yeah. yeah. definition for that? No. I've got the definition. No. What they consider normal civic, I mean, not, I mean yeah, 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 yeah. the Constitution may not agree normal civic obligations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, what they'll do is you go to court and they'll say, we'll do a deal here, you do somebody else community service, or we'll strip your money or jail you or whatever, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So, have fun with that, guys. Mm -hmm. You know. As I say, it's up to you how you want to play with it, but it's powerful stuff, just go to know it. And then, well, if you don't know it, you haven't got it, you don't, you, you've no application, don't know the range, I can go in, I keep saying that, and I can't say other things. Yes, ma'am? General question, well, with regards to the more, you know, here and now, Scottish independence, right? Yeah. Uh, my feeling, but, well, you know, it, it's an interesting thing, is that you're, you're saying you went against Scotland, went against English law. Well, a long time ago, 1325 is <coughs> only 107 years after the Magna Carta, which I think is the basic principle of what you know, we're all agreeing on. Here, well, Magna Carta, the, the Magna Carta Treaty was turned, it was, was compromised into the Magna Carta Act, the first Parliament of England, so Edward I and his barons sat around the table, done a deal with each other, you know, so, yeah, well, I'll, I'll cut your taxes and we'll chop some of this, the Lord said, we'll chop, chop some of this Magna Carta stuff out, you know, and, and we'll do a deal here, whereas what we'll do is we'll go and carve up Scotland and Wales, we'll and we'll build your castles, <coughs> and that's why Magna Carta Act 1297 uh, uh, was such a compromise, because it was designed so when they invade Scotland and Wales, they didn't have the money to do it. The king needed the barons' money. Well, there wasn't a formal union some several hundred years later, and now we've got history of peace itself, in my mind, and Scotland wants to... Well, it's not necessarily Scotland. Do, do, do Scotland do Scotland's still a country. want independence? Scotland's still a kingdom of Scotland. England, England's still a kingdom Although of England. Although it's still going to be under the jurisdiction of the European Union. Now, aren't they? Mm. Uh, if so they want to be. So, so you keep telling us, I don't know that's my consent, I've never voted for it. Is anyone in this room voting for that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's the same thing as I'm saying, the history repeats itself with Scotland. England come in and say, that we are now in charge, big guns, we've taken over all the wards of, of, of kowtow to us, so you peasants are going to do what you're told, you're now the bosses, and the Scots went, the peasants, us, in this room today, went, mm, not happy with that. But you saw before now, you mentioned the English Bill of Rights, the Sixth Amendment and Bill of Rights, you're saying it's superseded in many ways by the Scottish thing, which is less well known. Do you know what I mean? Well, the claim of rights was the Scottish interpretation yeah. of the English Bill of Rights, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And then you get the, the, the 1706 Treaty of Union, which you've not read it, read it. You have, the, it's a very interesting document, because it mentions Great Britain, the United Kingdom of Great Britain, small U, small K of Great Britain, the United Kingdom of Great Britain, capital U, capital K, uh, and it talks about the Queen of <coughs> Britain. Which is she's not the Queen of the United Kingdom, she's Queen of Britain, yes, the is. Navy of Britain. 
Again. Start thinking maritime course. Yeah, maritime, yeah. Maritime. Still all in flux, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. guess what's going on. Still all in flux. Yeah. You know, the definitions of the United Kingdom. Yeah, because you know, we've not been looking there. We are looking at it. We are looking. What's the difference between Great Britain and the United Kingdom? So, so, so. Some people. Where do you say it? That's all gone wrong. School, we never thought of that. Long time ago. Yeah. 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 Yeah.